the purpose of Christmas as we enter into this season of um, celebrating the, our Lord and Savior's birth. We want to get into the Bible and understand accurately concerning Jesus Christ and why did he come into this world. He came into this world to save us and to make us like himself. We will bring, we are we're coming from the book of Matthew. You turn with Matthew chapter number, uh, chapter number, Matthew chapter number one. We're going to start at verse 21. Okay. Matthew. Matthew, we got it. Matthew chapter number, chapter one. Here it says, And she shall bring forth, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. What kind of son he's going to be is found in verse. Now, in Matthew, this is this is Matthew is gives us the the. the uh, the genealogy of Jesus Christ, where he came from, as far as from Abraham. Look at verse one. We got to understand that first. Book of generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David. Abraham begot Isaac, and all the way from Matthew chapter one, all the way to twenty-one, is forty-two generations. All of these lineages through Joseph, the husband of Mary came Jesus. Why did he came? And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And now this is also fulfilling, this is also fulfilling the prophecy in Genesis chapter 15. Remember I said the seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman? As we go back to Genesis, um, Genesis, okay, Genesis, we'll go to Genesis 15, no, Genesis 3 and 15. This is God's purpose of sending his son is to fulfill what was that God made with Mary, uh, with Eve, excuse me, concerning the seed of the woman. And I will put enmity, look at verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and, thy, and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The bruising of the heel and the head, as we look at this little visual picture I'm going to show you here. The, the snake, the snake is serpent, it was the devil, the serpent, and the seed of the woman, the son of God, the son of God would die on the cross. The serpent's head represents Satan. He's, his nature lives inside of the human race, that seed. Remember, he had the, Christ had to die on the cross, or the, he was hung on a tree. All right? He died on the cross for what reason? That he might put the fruit where it came from. Back to Satan, the fruit of, of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree. They ate from the fruit of the tree. It contaminated the entire human race. Every one of the human race became a, a servant of Satan because of the seed that was in the fruit. So God sent the Son of God as a gift, as a gift. Remember, going back to Matthew, look at Matthew, got to understand the Bible. I'll get there one day. In Matthew, look at it says, in Matthew, Matthew chapter what? Chapter 1. Look at verse 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, 
and thou shalt call his name Jesus. That's the name of the Son. For what reason? For he shall save his people from their sin. How was he going to do that? He would die on the cross. He would be put to death. He would be put to death on the cross. He would put to be put to death on the cross that he might deliver us from the power of the devil. Now let us turn to the book of Hebrew, chapter number uh, chapter number two. It gives us some more. Turn to Hebrew chapter two, Hebrew. Hebrews chapter 2, let us hear, turn here, oh God, okay. Here at verse 1 it says, verse 6, but, but in a certain place he testifies saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? We, it goes back to Genesis chapter number, go back to Genesis chapter number, uh, chapter number 1 and 26, God made man in his image after his likeness. God created man in his image after his likeness. So let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over everything. But something happened and after God formed man in chapter 2, he from the dust of the ground, in verse 15, God commanded the man not to eat of the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the, eat, in the day that he eat, he will surely die. In chapter 3, we see the beginning of the transgression of the first parents. Paul says in Romans 5, by one man, parakoi, disobedience, all became sinners. What was the disobedience? Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for the day that you eat. Not look, not touch, not smell, but eat because what they ate became part of their body. The seed of the serpent was in the fruit of the tree and the serpent is the devil. That's why original sin is from Satan. The whole entire human race became a child of the devil because of the seed that they were born with in their bodies made them a slave to the devil. And the only way to get it out of us, God had to send his son to die in our stead to pay the price for sin, which was death. If we would pay for it, we would pay for it eternally. Christ would die once to pay for the sin. So what happens in, 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 Genesis, in Matthew chapter 1, 21, is the fulfillment of the prophecy that was made that God will send his son or the seed of the woman that's why Christ was born of a virgin. Christ was not born by the power of his father Joseph. If you read the whole chapter of Matthew, Joseph thought his wife committed adultery. He was going to put her away privately. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For what is conceived in her is the child of the Holy Ghost. All it was done might be fulfilled that was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall bring forth a son, Isaiah 9 and 7 and 14, shall bring forth a son, and you will call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. God will become the seed of the woman. God would bond himself with flesh. Here, God would become a man. That's what he's saying here. All right. Erase this off. Bring this back up again. God would become, he's the God man, the God man. 1 Timothy 3.16, 1 Timothy 3.16, without controversy, it says, and, and here, God become the God-man, the, the uh, theanthropus, theanthropus, the Greek, theanthropus, he's the God-man. 1 Timothy 3.16 said, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, let's read it, let's turn there real quick. Look at 1 Timothy. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.16. Let's go to the 16th verse. What it says. Without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God. Look at say God was manifested, manifested, revealed, 
made, rendered apparent, declared, manifested to show in the flesh. How was he manifested in the flesh? He was manifested in the flesh through what? The birth in Bethlehem. That little baby that was born in Bethlehem was God himself in the flesh. Isaiah, write this down, Isaiah 7 and 14 and Isaiah 9 and 6. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, Isaiah 9 and 6. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. He's the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let scriptures be true with every man a liar. Okay? Let's read this again. Without controversy, 1 Timothy 3.16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, preached unto the Gentiles, believed unto the world, received of the glory. Received unto glory. Who was received up in the glory? The man called Jesus. Jesus was put to death 33 years after his birth. And Matthew chapter 121 shows us the Son of God, who is God himself, becoming a human being, wrapped in flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16. Amen? So for what reason? That he, he is the seed of the woman who would de deliver us from the seed of the serpent. Where is the seed of the serpent? It's in our bodies. The reason why we die, we are worm food. We turn to dust because God cursed the serpent. He said unto the serpent, because you done this thing, the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. You got to understand the whole meaning of Christmas is not Santa Claus, Rudolph the red nose reindeer, and giving presents. It's God's gift to us to save us from ourselves. He wants to deliver us from the grave, from going to the grave. How was he going to do this? What caused us to go to the grave is by one man's sin. Romans chapter 5. For by one man's sin, death by sin. So death is past. Death is past because of, of, of Adam. 1 Corinthians 15 says, For by one man's sin entered into the world. And, and, and because of sin, let us read it. I rather you, we have to prove things in Scripture so your faith can be trusted, trust in the reliability of the gospel. Your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of our God. Now look at Romans chapter 5. Write these down and go over this video again so you can come to understanding when you don't get no presence from no anybody. The greatest presence, the gift that God has given us is His Son, Jesus. Amen. I celebrate Christmas. I give gifts, but it's not the, that's not the point. It's getting your, and in your mind that the whole reason of Christmas is Jesus. Amen? And if you have Christ, you've got the greatest gift. Turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Look what he said. Romans chapter 5, I think in best, verse 12. Look at verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man... Sin entered into the world, and death by sin. What death? There are three deaths that Adam introduced to every one of us. Spiritual, a t physical, spiritual death is separated from God. Everyone is born, have no relationship with God. God has to come and find you to open your eyes to see Him. But by nature, we don't want God. We don't seek God. All have sinned. We are in darkness. From the time to the cradle to the grave, we are, we are perverted not converted. God has to help us and deliver us from ourselves so we can see the light. All right? Wherefore, it's by one man's sin entered into the world and death. Three deaths. Spiritual death. Ephesians says, we were dead in trespasses and sin has he made us alive. We were dead, alienated, separated from God. Spiritual death. God's spirit and our spirit are separated. There's no fellowship there. When Adam was created, he was clothed with the righteousness of God. The presence of God was on him, but when he sinned, God's presence left him. That's why David said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Because he knew that if God's Spirit left him, he would be lost. So it's the first kind of death is spiritual death, separated from God spiritually. The second death is physical death. The physical death, the physical death is the grave. 
Amen? The grave. Physical death is when we die, okay? Then we go to the grave, all right? Throw you in, you in a casket, amen? Either by whatever mode of death, when you die, you go to the grave. This is called the grave. The grave is physical death, physical. Physical death, when the body returns back to the dust. God said unto Adam, from dust you are, from dust you are, from dust you shall return. Amen. God cursed the ground. He said, cursed is the ground for thy sake. Amen. The grave was a, was, a, was a means of God delivering us through our Lord Jesus. If we could not die, we could be unredeemable. We could not be redeemed. The word redeem is to buy out of a slave market. If we are slave to sin and we are immune to death, what way can God redeem us? How can he deliver us? What, what payment can he use if people have eternal life? So God allowed physical death as a means to bring salvation to us through our Lord Jesus, who would die on the cross, amen, about 4,000 years into the future, God would send his son to die on the cross, to die our death, that through the resurrection of the dead, he would rise from the dead on the third day, third day, that the resurrection is the proof that God accepted his son paid in full for our sin debt that will take us to the grave. So Jesus came to be our, Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus was our kinsman redeemer. The word kinsman redeemer, he, he kinned himself with flesh. He became something he never was, remained what he was. The God who created the universe became a human being. That's why when you read uh, St. John chapter what? Turn to St. John. Hallelujah. And St. John chapter what? I'm giving you a lot of scriptures. St. John chapter what? One. It said, in the beginning what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. This is Christ as the Word in eternity. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, the Word. And in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That light is that little baby that was born in Bethlehem. He was the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He made the worlds and made man in his image. He was, look at this, verse 10. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Now look at this same one. Look at verse 14. And the word who made the world, and the word was what? Made flesh. Look at that word flesh, sarks. He became a human being. He was made flesh and dwelt. The word dwelt, he pitched his tent among us. Among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. For John bare record, witness of him, cried, saying, that this was he whom I spake. There cometh after me, a coming after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have I received, what? Grace for grace, favor for favor. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. Amen? By Jesus Christ. For no man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared Him. He has brought Him out that He might be seen. You have to read these verses so your mind can understand why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus Christ come into the world? He came into the world to die our death that He might make us a Son of God just like Him. Amen? Now look at this. Look at verse uh, number 12. This is the proving fact. But as many as received him, the word, because the whole topic of this verse, chapter is the word. In the beginning was the word. Amen? And the word is the son of God. In the beginning was the son of God. 
and the Son of God was with God. The word beginning here, RK, it does not mean the beginning of creation. It is the beginning when the word out of eternity spoke nothing and nothing became everything. Here it is. The word in the beginning is the word RK. It is, the, it is when God out of eternity spoke his word and time began. And the, and the one who spoke his word was his son, which is the mind of God revealed in creation, unknown in eternity, because the mind of God, only God knows his mind. So God revealed his own mind as the person of his son, the son of God, Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the son of God, which is the word of God, which is the mind of God. Because the word logos means an inward thought. It would mean a thought in the mind. And what it means, an inward abstract thought. Jesus is the mind of God revealed in time and creation. Who has known the mind of God? The mind of God. So God revealed his mind and, the, and he called his mind the son of God, which is God himself revealed in creation. Amen. The son of God always existing, existed with the father because he's the mind of God. Christ the, the, the power of God, Christ, the wisdom of God. Christ is the mind, the eternal mind. In the beginning was the word, the same word that spoke to worlds in Psalm chapter 33. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. The same word in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created. In the beginning the word created the heavens and the earth. And the, and the word spoke and the word said, let there be light. And the word said, let there be dry land. And the word said, multiply, replenish the earth. And the word said, let us make man in our image. And the word made Adam and Eve. And the word created them in his image. Who is the word? Jesus Christ. So the word became flesh to be like the ones he made in the garden that he might die their death. And Lucifer didn't know that. The Bible said if the princes of this world would have known, they would, they, have, they would have never have crucified the Lord of glory. So in the book of Hebrews, it's, it's a love story for the entire body of Christ. God sending his son, amen, wrapped in flesh, which was not known in the sons of men in other ages, but in his last days, he has revealed his son to us. Let us turn to Hebrews chapter number what? Number one first, and we're going to look at chapter two. Look at this. Look what he says in Hebrews chapter one. Amen? Hebrews chapter one. God, who at diverse times, sundry times, and diverse manners, spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets. When he say fathers, he's referring to the Jewish nation, the, the children of Israel. Because that's through, through the nation of Israel, God sent the Savior. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot 12 patriarchs, and through the lineage of Judah came David, the royal line. God sent his son, Jesus, and he would wrap himself in the seed of David, amen, that he might be the savior of the world. That's why you read Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2, we see the coming of the Messiah. Through Luke, we see Jesus through Mary, making him the legal line, from tracing him all the way back to Adam. 72 generations. The Gospels of Luke, chapter 2, traces Jesus all the way back to Mary. Amen? Amen? I, I, either, let me make sure it is. I think it's, let me see, make, make, make it very clear. Let me turn to, uh, I have it right. It's Luke 3 or Luke 2. Make sure I have it. Hallelujah. Man, come on, man. What's going on here? Luke chapter 3, I believe. 1, okay. It's chapter 3, I believe. Okay. Now, in Luke chapter 3, verse 23, it shows Jesus' genealogy through Mary, through Heli. Heli. Heli was the father of Mary. In Matthew chapter number uh, 1, it is the lineage of Joseph, the royal line. Joseph's father was Jacob. Let me give you the illustration here.
Okay, in Matthew, Matthew chapter, chapter 1, it traces Jesus through Joseph. 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 And that's called the royal line. The royal line through David. Through Solomon. The line of Solomon. That gives him the right to be king of Israel. Through in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, it is chapter number chapter number three, verse twenty-three. I think it's twenty-three. Twenty-three through through thirty-eight. It, it is the legal line that gives him a right to die on the cross for us. He came from the human race. It traces Jesus all the way back to Adam in verse 28. Which Adam begot, uh, Seth was of Adam, which is the son of God. Okay, look at, uh, we're going to read it, we're going to show it to you real quick. Okay, let me go back here. Look at uh, Luke, we're going to turn to Luke. I'd rather prove this to you so you can see it, so you can read it. You have to have good effective Bible study. Look at Luke chapter Luke chapter 3 and look at that verse all the way to verse all the way to verse 38. Let's start at, let's start at verse 23 first. So you can see what I'm coming from. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of being as supposed the son of Joseph. He was Joseph was not his father. He was his, he was a stepfather. Uh, legally, his, his father based on marriage, but he was not his biological father. Which was the son of Heli. Heli was the fa was the father of Mary, because Jesus, this is the marriage lineage. Because remember, if you read Matthew, you turn to Matthew chapter what? Uh, in Matthew chapter, we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 1. Don't forget this. Matthew chapter 1, we see Joseph's father was Jacob. Look at Matthew chapter 21. Not Matthew 21, Matthew 1, verse 20, I believe. Let me see. Okay. This is, this is Joseph's genealogy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. And look here. Verse 16 is, And Jacob begot Joseph. Jacob's daddy, Joseph's father was Jacob. This is called the royal line. So we have Jesus came through two gen, uh, he has two genealogies. You trace him through Mary and you got to trace him through Joseph. Joseph, who was the uh, not the biological father of, of Jesus because Jesus was conceived by the Holy Ghost. But he but but by marriage, him by him marrying Mary. It made the birth, when Jesus was born, it made Je Joseph his father based on marriage, okay? Not biologically. So it gave Jesus a legal right to take the throne of David, to be the, real, the legal king over Israel. So we have two genealogies, what method God went through to bring his son into the world. So through, through Joseph, he, became the, he would be the royal line, the legal heir of the throne of David. Through Mary, he would be our kinsman redeemer in Luke chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 23 through 38. It traces Jesus all the way back to the Garden of Eden, where the fall of our first parents. Here we go again, Luke. In Luke chapter 3, beginning at verse what? 23. Okay, in verse 23, it's the legal line where he, you can trace Jesus through Mary. Where well, the promise was made that I would enmity between thee and not trace Jesus through Mary all the way back to Eve. 
all right, that he would bring salvation through the seed of the woman. All right, here we go here. Here, verse 23. And Jesus himself began, uh, began to be about 30 years of age, being as supposed the son of Joseph. He was not the son of Joseph because Joseph's uh, father was not Heli. That's Mary's father. But by marriage, uh, Heli was uh, Joseph's uh, father, father-in-law. All right? So we go all the way down, we backwards, because Luke goes backwards, which was the son of Matthew, which was the son of Levi. By 72 generations, we can trace Jesus all the way back. Keep going, keep going, we keep going all the way back. Okay. Judah, uh, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham. Keep going back, trace Christ all the way back. Keep going, keep going which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was a type of son of God and because the son of God, Jesus, the one that made Adam, would become like Adam. He would become the second Adam. As I showed you here in this illustration, Jesus would become the second Adam. From Adam, he would come in the likeness of sinful flesh and condemn it. Amen? There are two Adams. So we got to understand the whole purpose of him born, being born in the city of Bethlehem. Go back to Hebrews. Hebrews, he was born that he might bring many sons to glory. Let us look here. Look at, turn to Hebrew. All righty. Hebrews. Okay. Look what he says. God, who at sundry times and divers manners spoke in time past of the fathers by the prophets, has these last day, days spoken to us by his Son, the Son of God, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and whom also he made the worlds. So he's saying the Son of God made the worlds. How did he make the world? Before he was made flesh. Amen. The little baby that was born in the city of Bethlehem is our creator. He is the one that made the universe. Read St. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, that's the Son of God. And the Word was with God, and the Word, the Son of God, was God. But he was not made known to Israel until he was made flesh. That's why he says in Hebrews chapter what? Chapter 1, look what he says. God who had sun dry time in various ways has these last days spoken to us by his Son. Look at he says. God who had sun dry different ways and different manners. In diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. But he didn't speak to, the, to them by the Son of God. He was latent. Latent means he was there, but he was not revealed. He was patent when he was made flesh and dwelt among us. Has these last days spoken to us by his Son? He has appointed him heir of all things. Look at it. By whom else he made the world. Amen. Read Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Look what he says with the Son of God. Oh, the Son of God is not the creator of the world. Yes, He is. He created everything and everyone. We'll go back here. I'm going to give you another reference to Jesus making everything and everyone. He is the source because He is the Word of God. He is the mind of God. He is God Himself wrapped in flesh. Look in Colossians. Colossians we'll get there. Colossians 1 Look at the 1 and 12. Look what he says in 12. Tell you what, what God the Father has done for us at the birth of Jesus. This is what God has done for us. Giving thanks unto the Father who has made us meet or qualified partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who delivered us from the power of darkness because of the cross of Jesus. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. The one that was born in Bethlehem. He translated, has taken us. Look at the word translated. He has taken us, transferred, to carry away, exchange, okay, remove into the kingdom of his son. He's going to bring many sons just like Jesus, whom we have appointed, whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Who is the image of the invisible God? 
Who is the Son of God? I thought Adam was. Adam was made in the image of the Son of God in Genesis chapter 1, 26. Who was the image of the invisible God? The Son of God. And Adam also. Because God made Adam in the image of the Word. So the one that was, he was made in the image of the Word, and the Word came to save us, to save his image when he was made flesh. Jesus is the Word of God in Genesis chapter 1. He is the Word of God in, Gen in Matthew 1.21 and Matthew 1.23. And, and St. John 1 and 1, and St. John 1, 14. And the Word, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him, look at this, the Son of God, for by Him were all things created in heaven and in earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Who did it? The Son of God. The Son of God is absolutely 100%. Absolutely. The Son of God is absolutely 100% God. The Bible said, In Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Him. For what reason? That He might bring us into God through the death of the cross. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and earth, visible or invisible, thrones or dominion, principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him, and by Him all things consist. He is before, verse 17, He is before all things, and by Him all things He hold together consist. He is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have all the preeminence. He's the first one to receive a resurrected body. Amen. That's why He was put to death on the cross. That's why He was born, that He might die on that cross. That he might die on the cross, that through the resurrection from the dead, my goodness, that through his resurrection from the dead, he'll be the first begotten from the dead to receive a resurrected body in his resurrection, resurrection, in his resurrection, he's the first born from the dead, not the firstborn of creation. He is the firstborn to have a resurrection body. Amen. He was put to death at the cross. He was buried for three days. He was dead for three days. On the third day, he rose to make a second Adam. That's us. We are born of the second Adam, a new birth. We are sons of God because of his resurrection. Sons of Elohim. We are sons of God. Sons. Sons of God, because of his resurrection. Going back to Hebrew. Look at Hebrews chapter number what? Chapter number two. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter two. Look at what he says. Look at verse 2 and 6. But in a certain place he testifies, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Why is God thinking about man that thou should visit him? Thou made him little lower than himself. And the angels, but really in, he is, in the Hebrew is Elohim. Little lower than God. Crowned him with glory and honor. Did set him over all the works of thy hand. That's why God made us. You're not an accident nor a mistake has put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things under subjection under him. He left nothing, nothing to put under him. But now we see not all things are put under him. Look at verse 19. We see Jesus, who is called the God-man, made flesh, who was made a little lower than angels, a little lower than Elohim, for by the suffering of death, crowned with glory, and honor that he by the grace of God should what taste death for every man for what reason why he was born for it became him to be it became him for whom are all things for by whom are all things bringing what many sons look at that word sons unto glory he want many sons of God that the captain of their salvation are made perfect through suffering how are we are made perfect we are made perfect because of the cross the death of Jesus, 
the death of Jesus, his death on the cross, his death on the cross, and his resurrection, in his resurrection, God makes us over again. We are called the second Adam. This is called the regeneration. The regeneration, the second Adam. The first Adam, eternal death. So the God, the Son of God, became flesh that he might die the death of the first Adam by the shed blood, by his blood at the cross. People don't want to preach the cross. You, the cross, you don't have a prayer. The cross is your way to the second son, the second Adam. For, you have to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It explains it. As we bore the image of the earthly, we shall bear the image of the heavenly. The only way he could give us this, he had to be born in the city of Bethlehem. He was born in the city of Bethlehem. Amen? And Matthew what? Matthew... Hallelujah. Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. Luke chapter 2. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary in a dream. He appeared to her. And explained to her. That unto this day is born in the city. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And shalt bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. He will be called the son of the highest. And of his kingdom there should be no end. What kind of kingdom that you and I are born in. We are born of the... We are born into the kingdom of the Son of God, making every one of us like Jesus. We are sons of God. Jesus is not the only Son of God. You and I also. God sent His Son that He might make, bring many sons to glory. Read Romans chapter 8 and 29. It says this, Whom He foreknew, He predestinated, foreknew His prognosco, foreknowledge, He knew at all times, and He predestinated us, marked certain ones out in eternity that we might be conformed, somorphous, into the image of his son. God's plan in eternity, he wanted many sons just like the one that was born in the city of Bethlehem. Just like the one that spoke the worlds into existence. God wanted us to be like the one that said, let there be light. And there was light. He wanted us to be like him. And God made the first Adam in the flesh, he was not the real one. The second man will make us the real sons of God. The first Adam was of the earth, earthly. The first man was a suko man, a pneumaticos, excuse me, a sukikos man, a soul man. The second man would be a pneumaticos man, a man that is born from the grave through the body of Christ. That's why we take the communion to represent his blood that is poured out for us cover our inner man, giving us a right to become sons of God because when he sees the blood, it makes we are in a covenant relationship with him in our inner man. Making us a right to become a son of God through the blood of the cross that the son of God paid for and when he rose from the dead, he could breathe upon us and make us a son of God by putting that implant into us. We have not received the spirit of the world. We have received the spirit of his son. God has sent the spirit of his son crying in our hearts, crying Abba Father, making us a son of God just like Jesus. We can call him Heavenly Father just like Jesus for he is our Heavenly Father because according to St. John chapter 1, as many as received him to them gave he power to become sons of God which are born not of blood not by the will of man but of by the will of God not by the will of flesh not by the will of blood but of out of the will of God that word out of is the Greek word is ek it means generate out we came out of God because of the decree that was made before the foundation of the world God chose us in Christ that we might become like Christ. And God loved us so much, he died on the cross. Before his death, he was born in the city of Bethlehem. That's why all the heavenly hosts says, Joy to the world and peace and goodwill to all men. For unto this day is born unto the city of David a Savior, who is what? Christ the Lord. Amen. 
Why did Christ come? He came to be the second man that he might die the death of the first man, that he might regenerate us, make us a new kind of species, being born of a divine nature, being adopted sons, being legal sons of God through the resurrection of the dead. And he sent that implant in you to let you know, don't be sorry that you don't get no gift. God has given you the greatest gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life but God sent not his son to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved how are we saved to the son his son became the toilet to flush everything that's in us in him he was buried he was put to death dead for three days on the third day he rose from the dead and sat far above heaven beyond far beyond principalities and powers and put everything under his feet for what reason that he might make us like him Hallelujah. 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 That's why when you read St. John, 1 John, turn there with me real quick. Amen. 1 John chapter 3. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. 1 John chapter 3. Look what he said. Behold what manner the love the Father has bestowed upon us. That's you. He's talking about you, child of God. He's talking about you, child of God, going through. Look what manner of love. What kind of son of God are you just like Jesus? Look what manner of the love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Remember we read in 1 St. John chapter 1, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He wrapped himself in flesh. So you are son of God not outwardly but inwardly. When a person die in the Lord, he's absent from the body. He's present with the Lord. He's a son of the living God. He reigns in life. Even now, the Bible said we sit with Christ in heavenly places now. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. This is the whole meaning of Christmas. God sent in his son to make us a son, just like him. Hallelujah. We are sons of God. And it does not yet appear what he says. Behold, with manner of love, the Father was stored upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are sons of God. Now. Hallelujah. Now we are sons of God. Here we go. Let me read it again so you can see it. Behold, with manner of love, the Father bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Son of God. You're a son of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Because they didn't see him. He, the flesh covered him. But they saw the power of God work through him when he raised the dead. He walked on the sea. He healed the sick. He opened the eyes of the blind. Amen. The flesh covered the divine glory. But what's inside of him, that's, that is the goodie bag. We're going to be like the one that, that the veil covered. Amen. Absent from the body, we present with the Lord in glory, made into the image of the Son of God. We will reign the meaning of the kingdom of God. We are kingdom of sons. God made many sons unto God. Glory. Every one of us are sons of God. Behold, now we are sons of God. And does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him. As he is, look at that, we shall be like him. But of now we are sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when he shall appear, we shall be what? Like him. For we shall see him as he is. He's going to change us. We, are, or we have a, we have a son, sonship relationship with him. God has sent the spirit of his son crying in our hearts, crying out by Father, Romans 8. Amen. So God bless you today. Hope you learned a little bit enlightenment. See you next time. God bless everyone.